teach and learn respect. Do you have any Chick-fil-A's down here? Yes. yes. Amen. Yeah, I like Chick-fil-A. I like chicken pretty good, but I love the kind of responses you get from people at Chick-fil-A. So you go through the drive-thru and you say, I'd like a number one with uh, Chick-fil-A sauce and fries and ketchup and a Coke. And she says, uh, will there be, you're, you're hearing this, you know, on the deal. Will there be anything else? I say, no, thank you very much. And she says, my pleasure. My pleasure. Last week, or maybe it was two weeks ago, Mary and I went to a McDonald's, and we're coming through the drive-through. I live in drive-throughs, so we're coming through the drive-through, and we got a quarter pounder and a small Big Mac. How can it be a small Big Mac? I don't know, but anyway, a small Big Mac and a large coat. And so the lady said, "Would that be all?" I said, "No, thank you very much." And she said, "My pleasure." I said, "You used to work at Chick-fil-A, didn't you?" And she said, yes, I've been outed. I, I did work at Chick-fil-A. Now, I like their food, and I, their service is fine, but I just love the fact that they're respectful people at Chick-fil-A. Now, let me ask you a question. The guy's 22 years old, and uh, somebody asks him something and says, thank you, and he says, my pleasure. Do you think that comes just automatically? Does anybody learn to say yes sir or yes ma'am or yes please or no thank you? You think that's automatic? No, it's something that's taught and it's something that's learned for all of us. For all of us. We all learn respect and we should teach it. The Bible says that, honor thy father and thy mother, that's in the Ten Commandments, that thy days may be long in the land. And so God promises things will go well with a person who lives with respect. Number four. We're just cruising right along, aren't we? Number four, attitude. Attitude, attitude. In Philippians chapter four, the Apostle Paul said, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Did you know contentment is something that's learned? Did you know all of us enjoy stuff because we want to? All of us enjoy what we want to enjoy. I was talking about Denver earlier. Several years ago when Will was just a youngster, we were in Florida, and there was a kid that played for University of Florida. He, uh, I think he was an offensive lineman. But anyway, he was chosen, drafted by Denver, and so a year later, we were in Denver in a revival campaign, and this guy was a, a member of the Broncos, so he said, to Will and to me, would you like to come to the game Sunday? We said we'd love it. It was in September. So we had the service Sunday morning, went to lunch after that, and then Will and I went to the stadium to see the Broncos play. Well, they were playing Miami. And this is way back in the day when Elway was, was playing for the Broncos and Marino was playing for Miami. Quite a game, wouldn't you say? So Will and I saw this game. Well, you know, they call it Mile High Stadium. Well, I found out the reason they call it that is because Will and I were sitting about a mile high. <laughs> we were up at the very top of the stadium, and it had snowed. Now, it was in September, but it had snowed, and there was about three inches of snow where you walked, and there was snow on the seats. We had to brush the snow off the seats, and it wasn't freezing cold, but it wasn't especially warm. It was chilly. It was cold. And of course, the out... The game is what, two and a half, three hours long? And uh, we just loved it. What was the weather like? It was miserable. What was the seat like you said? in? It was like the middle seat on flight 637 to Toronto. You know, if you've ever been on an airplane, you, you sat in the middle. I'm serious. It was like this, and Will was sitting right next to me. And hot dogs, and this is, this is, long time ago, hot dogs were like eight bucks. Uh, needless to say, Will and I dieted while we were there at the game. Um, okay, so did I enjoy By the way, Miami won. Miami won. Uh, there was a uh, crossing pattern, and Marino hit uh, somebody, and he went 70 yards, and they won the game. Okay, did I enjoy the game? Sure did. Did Will enjoy the game? Sure did. You know why? Because we wanted to. 
You ever, you ever you ever notice what you enjoy when you want to? And you, you ever have somebody come up? This ever happened to you? Somebody comes up and he whaps you on the back, and it hurts a little bit. You know, he goes, "Hey!" He whaps you on the back like that, and it hurts a little bit. And you turn around to see if you're going to get mad or not. <laughs> okay, if he's a friend, it's great, right? Mm -hmm. If he's a guy that's bugged you forever, you just wanna you just wanna hit him in the nose. Hadn't that ever happened to you? Yeah, well, that's attitude. That's attitude. And it's something, if the Apostle Paul said, I have learned in whatsoever state I am, there were to be content, that means you have to learn it. And if the Apostle Paul learned it, that means you and I can. Attitude's important. Attitude's important. And we ought to teach and learn the importance of attitude. Okay, this one's for parents. You ready? Number five. Teach your kids to do the dishes. Okay, you say, Brother Bill, <laughs> are you serious about this? I couldn't be more serious if there was a gun pointed at my head. No, I think it's very important. Teach your kids to do the dishes. Well, why is that? Because nobody's going to want to do the dishes by nature. <clears throat> and it teaches character. Somebody says, you know, football teaches character. Not nearly as much as doing, doing the dishes, Will. Teach you. you know, I really kind of like doing the dishes. I hate drying them. I don't want to dry dishes. I don't want to put dishes away. But I, I like to, I like to, especially if the little gizmo, you know, the hose on the sink, if it's high pressure, I love it. You get water all over the sink. You get it all over the kitchen. It's a great thing. And then whoever is drying has to clean up after, which I think is fine. So, uh, but you ought, yeah, you ought, to teach, you ought to teach your kids to do the dishes, all of us. You ought to learn stuff. Do your parents make sure you do things you didn't necessarily love? Do you ever think of how senseless it is to make up a bed? When I was a kid, I used to think, why do I have to make a bed? I'm just going to get in it again in 12 hours. Why should, why should, well, actually not 12, it's more like 16, whatever, but why, why make up a bed? To this day, that makes sense to me, but I make up, well, I don't make it by myself, but I help Mary make up the bed every morning. And I learned that from people who love me. Number six. You ready for this one? Don't complain. Don't complain. Two things about complaining. Number one, it's often based on sense. Things that make sense. Remember, remember when Jesus was anointed by oil from a lady who put oil on his feet and then used her hair on Jesus' feet? And the Bible says... One of the disciples, do you remember which one it was? Judas. Judas. Said, why was this waste of the ointment made? For this could have been sold, and it seems the, the spike, it could have been sold, I think it was 300 something. But a bunch of money. A bunch of money. Now that makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, except that he was wrong. He's complaining, he's griping about the wrong thing. That's what often happens in griping. But griping is dangerous because it's often based on common sense. Number two, it's dangerous because it's easy for other people to pick up on it. Have you ever been happy until you're around a grouch? <laughs> Never have you? Have you ever, seriously. Have you ever, hey, it's a great day. It's beautiful. The weather's wonderful. This is tremendous. This is great. Have you ever been happy about everything until you're around a person that gripes about everything, and before you know it, you're griping. I have a friend. He is a great guy. He's raised a wonderful family. He loves the Lord. And uh, he's, just, he's just a great guy. Well, recently, Mary and I joined the church that he's a member of. And uh, after the service... We, we've been at Eastland Baptist Church. This is a church we were members of for 25 years. And we, we joined this church. And after the service, pastor had us stand by the way you go out. And people would come by and shake your hands. You do that, don't you? Somebody, people come and say, God bless you. We're 
We're glad you joined the church and everything. And my friend came, <laughs> he came up and he took Mary's hand and shook Mary's hand and he said, quote, didn't think this was ever going to happen. <laughs> well, that's true, he didn't. But I mean, can, can you see maybe that's not the best way to handle this? You know, because it made me feel like saying, well, it did happen, you know, so that everybody's kind of grumpy about something that everybody should be happy about. You know, griping is a terrible thing because it's so contagious. And you can be so pious when you gripe. You know, I, I really believe the services are a little too long, especially on Wednesday nights when we have a guest speaker. And that makes sense, doesn't it? I'm not thinking to myself, yeah, this is... This is getting to be long. We've already been here for 49 minutes. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, but the problem is you, you miss it. Have you ever missed a legitimate, genuine blessing because you were griping? It's like living in South Florida in February and saying, it's too hot, man. <laughs> and there are people freezing in Illinois. I know it gets hot, but, you know, do the best you can to suffer through it. You're going to be all right. You know, so it's like, it's like going to a high-end restaurant and they don't have enough ketchup and that's all you can think about. Don't gripe. And teach others, encourage others not to gripe. Number seven. This is the best one because it's the last one. You ready for this? <laughs> Number seven, support one through six. <laughs> You're looking for something else? I'm sorry, that's it, people. <laughs> support one through six. Can I go through them again quickly? Okay. Number one, obedience. Number two, salvation. Number three, respect. Number four, attitude. Number five, one of my favorite, do the dishes. Number six, don't complain. Number seven, live your life supporting the first six. How important are these six things? They're fairly important because they really will make a difference in your life. And they're all based on simple Bible truths. Let's bow for prayer and the pastor will come and dismiss us. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for the privilege for Mary and me to be here at Lauderdale Baptist. And thank you for the friendship that these people have provided to us through the years. And I, I thank you for that privilege and pray it will continue in Jesus' name. Amen. Tomorrow night, Mary and I were going to leave in the morning. The pastor said to me, had supper. We are eating at their house, so I had to listen to him. The pastor said to me, uh, the fellow who's going to speak tomorrow night at Miami, what's the name of the church? Miami Beach Baptist. Miami Beach Baptist is sick. So could you stay and speak tomorrow night? And I said, yes, I will. So how far is it from here? <clears throat> it's 30, 35 miles, but it's... Yeah, 35 miles, so <laughs> if you're on a motorcycle, like 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's 35 miles. I'll be speaking tomorrow night, and the message tomorrow night is actually a lot better. You say, how do you know? Well, come on, people. Could it be worse? I mean, really. Right, so it'll be a lot better tomorrow night. I have no idea what I'm going to speak on. Uh, but uh, if you can come, we'd love to have you. And if you don't have any transportation, you can ride with the pastor and Melissa. It's not a problem. They'll stop and pick you up in their... Uh, Volkswagen, right? Sure. Pick you up in their Volkswagen. They've got room for about 20 people. <laughs> Pick you up and take you. God bless you, Pastor. You're dismissed. <laughs> that was good. <laughs>